So my name is Terry Boucher and I'm showing you a little bit about birch bark baskets. Um, this one was harvested probably about a year ago and when you harvest the birch bark itself you always leave an offering for whatever you take from the bush and you cut in a certain way like you cut down with your knife and across the bottom and you go a certain way like the way the sun goes and you cut along the bottom and along the top and in the spring when you put your hand in there to remove that piece of um, birch bark it makes a cracking sound and just basically uh, comes off the tree so you know when the when the birch bark is ready so we harvest in the spring and that's when we get most of our birch bark. This, what you see here, is spruce, spruce root, and you have to dig that. So once you take the root out of the ground, you need to uh, clean off the root first of all of all of the the uh, outer parts and then you have to cut. So what you do is you take a look at this top and you'd cut, see how that is? So once you get it going, then you use your both of your thumbs and you're bending. So bend and pull. See this motion? And then if it gets too, too brittle, you always have to have your pot of water or container of water and you soak it a little bit more so that it's not breaking. And if it starts like it's gonna break off here, you work on this side of the, see how that is? It was just about breaking there, so now it's just about even, so you pull evenly on both sides. So it takes like a, takes a while. First day you would be, probably um, take the birch bark and if you're lucky, you can find a spruce tree and that's what we use to, um, for this lacing is the spruce. It probably because it's more pliable and lasts longer and because the ancestors did it <laughs> and you always do what they tell you <laughs> so it's fairly everything that's done about a birch bark like you would think just looking at it, oh, that should be easy, but there's a lot of work involved in 
and digging it and splicing the roots. And when you're when you're making the um, this birch bark uh, like into this shape, it's really it's really um, dried out. So you basically have to warm it on. Um, like sometimes, well, mostly we warm it on the stove and then the bark softens up and you can shape it then. Because if you don't, it's going to break. So, So it almost becomes like um, plastic or something. <laughs> Here you go, and you can see how thin it becomes. Because this root was quite thick, and I've probably spliced it maybe five or six times. And this here would be a little bit wide, so I would take this off as well. As you see, when when you're making the um, when you're making the hole with this awl, the hole is fairly small, so you kind of gotta like move your all around and line it up. And I like to work from the inside to the outer. And sometimes that's hard because when you're working through two, two layers of the uh, It's not a fast process, and when you're when you're doing this, you, as with all things that you're doing, you pretty much have to be in good frame of mind, so that your work, that you're not putting any uh, bad energies into your work. See how that comes around now. This would be your first stitch. So then you'd stretch your next hole. And if you're working and this starts to get um, hard or where you think it's going to break, you got to put it in the water. When this dried, this was coming apart here, so like you can't really make a basket when it's coming apart like that. And inside here, to hold it into place is Saskatoon branch, which you splice in half and you keep turning it uh, a bit so that when you put it inside, of your basket that it's not going to break. And there are a few different like designs. Once you get this, the ends done, then you begin to work on the top. And that's a little bit, a little bit more challenging because you've got to hold the stick in place, the, the birch bark in place. <laughs> and it takes some time. So in days gone by, what they would use these for is picking berries. Like there's some that would have uh, leather 
around here. So you pick berries. Apparently you could carry water and they used pitch to cover all of the holes so that there's so that the water's not coming through. I didn't believe that they used it for water, but they do. They did. <laughs> so it had many uses, like you could store your berries in there after you've picked them and they're dried because um, back in the day we didn't have our freezers so berries were stored in something similar with a cloth around and possibly hanging up because um, to keep the mice away. Here's another uh, smaller, these are smaller rounder baskets and what I would use these for, what I would uh, is I need to make a top and possibly using uh, porcupine quills to make a design on the top there. So I was a residential school survivor and I talked about how all of our traditions were taken away from us. So we began to hire people from other nations to come and teach us these things um, with the birch bark and then with the ponderosa pine. We've done other workshops and where we've made uh, baby baskets. So to continue the tradition that was lost and taken from us is, is also important that we're, we continue to do that, to, kin to continue to gain back um, our culture and traditions. Basically, in that sense, we are gaining our strength back. Our strength from, um, like all that was taken from us and everything that's lost can now be, you can redo those. So we're not losing anything, like we don't want to lose it. We want to be able to teach our young people. So when we have these workshops, normally we invite our, anybody who wants to come, like a lot of um, people from Nazco and Kluskas and other areas live in town. So we open our workshops to anyone who wants to come, basically, to teach our people new skills so that they can stay busy. <laughs>